Peninsula, that's going to be the area that sees the bulk of the rain. Three to five, that'll be possible there. But even getting to Northern Cal, more rain expected as well. Yeah, it's going to be an active storm track week again for us here across the West. So let's get to it. We'll show you today's active weather. We've got rain coming in Northern California, a lot of Washington and Oregon. Snow level still really high, so it's not like we'll see a lot of snowfall for travelers there across the past levels. But you will see uh, continuous rain, it seems like, this week. Yeah, another system coming in for Tuesday into Wednesday. You can see that brings a little bit more rain, not just there in the Pacific Northwest. West, but also down towards maybe the Bay Area are working through your Thursday and then we're not done. There's another system that's trying to sneak its way on in as we head into our Friday. But they're all up here in the northern mm -hmm. western tier. So it's Southern California this week's not going to be a busy weather week for you. Uh, Seattle, this is this is our story. We've got rain every single day this week here in some shape or form. Some of it will be heavy, some of it will be morning or afternoon, but you can see all week long it's going to rain. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we can almost say the same force around Redding, California, at least through our Thursday rain at some point during the day each and every day. Friday, though, it looks like that's when things will get a chance to dry out. Low 60s, looking for a mixture of uh, sun and clouds out there for you as we head towards that end of the week. Ah, all right, well, some fans down down like that as well. So let's start with the rainfall. And, you know, we look at some of our different models. Let's look at the GFS and the European. We've got some rain in the forecast, but there's a little difference. One difference with the GFS is you notice there's some blue showing up here in the southern Appalachians. Yes, uh, perhaps at elevation. Um, but you know, as we get into the rest of the week, we'll watch this because the euro really doesn't have much at all coming in there. But what that tells us, the fact that, you know, we've got this precip coming through the south, at least one model has that signature for a little bit of snow there. Um, we've got some cooler air coming in. We've got a double trough situation heading up here, upper level low around the Great Lakes, a trough in the southern branch of the jet stream. And you know what? They're not going to combine those two pieces of energy, but we are going to see the moisture pool north. This is definitely a cooler scenario for the south and east. The temperatures are going to be on the cooler side. So let's watch and see what happens. Again, there's our two disturbances, and you can see how they don't merge. They stay separate. But we've got a trough over the southeast. That's going to mean temperatures will be running below average. The moisture will be getting pulled up, but a lot of it directed here, maybe through parts of Florida, South Georgia, uh, eastern south and North Carolina, but then offshore. So it does look like a big blow up kind of storm, but definitely a wet and unsettled second half of the week here because of it. This is your Thursday forecast, and we've got showers out there moving across the Tennessee Valley through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, the Mid-Atlantic, your Friday forecast, and then getting into your Saturday. Here we go with everything getting offshore by the weekend. So that's good timing Again, for now, Maybe Alex. off of uh, Lake Erie in terms of any accumulation. It's going to be light, but it's happening, right? So this is this very telling of the change in air and seasons and everything else going on. We have some lake effect rain showers that will start overnight tonight. That's about midnight. Then we fast forward to tomorrow morning and tomorrow morning we'll have mainly rain showers out there with some areas getting into some snow. You see that downwind of Lake Ontario, but you got to wait till you, you can go away from the lake because the lake temperatures are still really warm. So nothing of the snow variety will happen very close to the shore and a little elevation actually would help quite a bit to get into some of that snowfall adding up to maybe an inch or so here at you know any spot that does get accumulation but it's not a lot uh, the rainfall will be